going to Liverpool now and I think we've got to be realistic. There's every chance there's going to be two defeats. What more does this guy have to do to get the chance? Play the players. Don't keep picking the same players who've let you down previously. Oh, we're not mugs. We're yeah. not mugs anywhere. If the only way to get rid of Jadon Sancho is to sign Raheem Sterling, sign me up. No, Man United and Liverpool is a massive game. Always a massive game. Does the guy start straight away for you? He does for me, yeah. Straight in, and straight in. Yeah. And actually, after five minutes, I'd like, <laughs> I'd, I'd like to see him go right through Mo Salah. Back, Talk Sports Chief Football Correspondent Alex Crook, Talk Sport reporter Angelina Kelly. They're all back. The gang is back together after uh, a testing weekend. But it was bank holiday as well, so it wasn't just football. So hopefully, you guys had a good bank holiday. Crooked, good bank holiday. All good, nice. What's the bank holiday? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't exist anymore. They don't really exist, do they? No, not for really. Us. No, no, not really. Mm. But what does exist is sometimes Manchester United lose football matches. Um, it happened. Second game of the season um, against Brighton. We've got to start there at the Amex. Um, Crookie, our first defeat. Late Jao Pedro mm. goal. Um, is that the first warning sign to Eric Ten Hag in this Man United squad? Do you know what? I felt similar to the Community Shield. I was just annoyed. Uh, with the nature, not just to the, 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 the second goal that, that was conceded, but the first one as well. But the second one in particular, you're deep into stoppage time, just defend it, you know. And it was real schoolboy's own stuff, wasn't it? Everybody racing to the near post, three Brighton players unmarked at the back post, and it was utterly avoidable. And, and you know what? It feels a little bit like the game at Arsenal last season, where there was that sliding doors moment. United score what would have probably been the winner. It gets ruled out by the most marginal of offside calls. And again, in this game, really unlucky Joshua Zerksy because he can't get himself out of the way. And what I think would have been the winning goal gets disallowed. And all of a sudden, from going from back-to-back -back victories and a statement win at Brighton, who are going to be a good side this season, it's a defeat. And we go into Liverpool now, and I think we've got to be realistic. There's every chance it's going to be two defeats in the first Crookie, three games. Crookie, come on, Crookie. You've got to be realistic about these things. Realistic is they ain't beat us in the last three games, mate. Let them come to Old and Trafford. The one before that was seven. Yeah. <laughs> Crook, Crook. We, he's, he's negative today, isn't he? I know. Do you know why as well? I feel like this as well, because you before the Brighton game, you were a bit mm, yeah, you not said feeling you'd take it. Yeah, <laughs> we forced didn't you? it, we forced it to yeah. be more positive. <laughs> so really you should be like, I told you. I mean, Andrew, was how much of it was just unlucky? Because like Crookie said, we could have been leading the game, could have won the game, fine margins, mm -hmm. versus a little bit of the shade of like same old Man United, same old problems creeping in there, but it's early in the season. Yeah, it was. It did have that kind of air of feeling unlucky, but it's like, like you know, everything how talks about being clinical. Like that, that's the bottom line. Like we weren't clinical enough. And for me, as much as I think there were still some positives to take from it, my main takeaway was what is going on with all these offsides. Mm. This is it. Really, that is the one thing that really kind of popped up as a bit of a red flag for me. It's like. How is this team being trained? What is going on as to these professional footballers are offside so many times? Manchester United were caught off time six times in that game. That's Brighton ridiculous. zero. Well, that let's is... see what happens this weekend with Brighton because I think what we're seeing from Fabian Hertzler is they're going to play with this high line. They're going to try and get the opposition offside. Let's see if Arsenal are cute mm. enough to get the better of them. I think they probably will be and, yeah. and that will highlight I was point. so frustrated for that exact reason, Angela, because I was looking at it saying, Hang on a minute, this is very similar to playing against Spurs with the high line, very similar to Unai Zemri's Aston Villa. And when, when the offsides were, were, were racking up, I was like, just freeze the game. Hang on a minute, they're playing this high line, pick your moments. It's no different to, to like I said, playing against Villa and Spurs and pick the right moment to make that run in behind. Because you're gone, you're gone clear. The times we did break the lines, there were chances to be got. And for me, I was, I was really, the biggest, annoyance I had, the biggest grievance I had was the deviation from the plan as soon as Mason Mount came off. Now, yeah. we haven't really had it on record yet with Eric to say he's now injured or he's not. He did say he felt something, he didn't want to take any, any risks, look how injury, how injury prone he was last year, how many injuries he had. But as soon as he came off, I said at half time on the stream I was doing, I said, hang on a minute, I, he shouldn't really be coming off. I think he was really good yeah. in terms of what we were trying to do. Um, but the deviation from the plan after that, no press, giving the ball away, wasn't organised until we got ourselves back into it. I just, I just found that, I just found that quite alarming. But there were shades of, of just basically being unlucky. Let's talk Alejandro, Alejandro Garnacho because he's knocking on the door now, banging down the door, Crookie, to start. Should he be starting ahead of Marcus Rashford now? Yeah. 
I think we, we will probably all agree with that. Or Ahmad um, on the right-hand side, however you see it. I don't know. Yeah, I think at the minute you, you would go Ahmad and, and Ganacho. It, it's just not happening again, is it, for, for Marcus Rashford? He was as guilty as anybody when it came to those offsides. Didn't really have a goal threat. Still, to me, doesn't look like he's enjoying his football. Mm. And Ganacho, he's come off the bench at Wembley, made an impact. He's assisted Xerxes for the winner, having come off the bench against Fulham. And he's come off the bench and been unlucky here not to score the winner. So Ten, I would be amazed. Again, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'd be amazed if he doesn't start. And I think Rashford probably will be the full guy. For us off the bench, though, Ange, like, if you're, if you're, if you're a fullback, mm. it's the 70th minute, it's the 65th minute. You, you kind of don't want to see Garnacho coming on, do you? Um, and actually, okay. he's proven quite deadly from that position. Is there an argument opposite to that, that maybe Ten Hag is seeing him as, like, secret weapon? Look at Trossard at Arsenal. I know, again, people might want to see him start now ahead of Martinelli, but sometimes managers don't see it that way. Sometimes managers see it as, well, we're playing in the right way. This guy's the key to unlocking people, uh, unlocking teams later on in games. Mm. I, I do get what you're saying because you think of him coming off the bench, He's obviously a threat. You know, we've highlighted just now the goals that he's scoring. But when the other people in that position are not pulling their weight, yeah. to be completely mm -hmm. honest, what are we going to do? Just be mediocre with Marcus Rashford, be offside five or six times and then just wait till the 70th minute and then we're going to start playing football. That, that, for me, I think it's just because the other options at the moment are nowhere near as strong as they need to be. So for me... I think that you do need to just give him that chance to start because it's not, I don't, he doesn't strike me as the type of player that you'll put him on from the start and he's going to be absolutely horrendous and a completely opposite player. This is someone who, considering how young he is, already has some really good experience, you know, with the national team, the way that he played for Manchester United last season. I think the guy deserves it. I think how many times have we seen Man United take chances on players or start players that you wouldn't necessarily think? The amount of chances that Marcus Rashford is getting, what more does this guy have to do to get the chance? And I think, you know, I would rather see us trying to do something different than just keep with this groundhog day of Marcus Rashford. It is not working at the moment. Um, Ahmad, I thought, was good. I think that there were moments where I wasn't 100% happy with him during the game, but overall... It's getting to the point now where, as much as I really, really rate him, it's like, what, going into like his fourth season, maybe? Mm, but he hasn't we, been given opportunity, yeah. loans. He, yeah. he needs to really be pushed on now, so I yeah. want him to get that How game big was time. that goal for him? And especially in that moment, because actually, yeah. I think before that, he wasn't playing too well. He probably would have been mm. the one to come off, really. Yeah. Um, but scores that mm. goal just from being direct. Yeah. Like, you know, a lot of his players is, is very meticulous, is quite high-level technical ability, keeping hold of the ball. But I thought it was quite refreshing to see him go, mm. forget all of that, I'm just going to cut in and shoot. And, and he I, needs to add that to his game Exactly, too. and I just want to see the two of them. We've been saying about <laughs> this the third week I'm saying it. I want to see these two starting because I would rather... I understand that Liverpool, it's a big game, etc. but I would rather see us do something different than carry on with something that isn't working. Marcus that. Rashford, Liverpool... The Manchester in him is going to uh, come out. That might like, be a factor. Could this be, True. Eric, could, 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 could Eric see it as like, OK... He's on thin ice now. Yeah. Eric took him off. Let's make no mistake about mm -hmm. it. And Marcus Rashford had to walk behind the away and clap into the away fence. It wasn't toxic. Mm -hmm. It wasn't no. toxic, but I think the fans appreciated that Eric had taken him off. Marcus didn't... It was more clapping for thanks for taking him and off. That, Not necessarily exactly. good game, But Marcus mate. clapped back, so it wasn't like a, oh, it's toxic. Yeah. But could Eric be like, I'll give you one final chance at home to Liverpool. Show me. Or you're out, or do you think he, he, he will make the change? No, I think it's a really good point. And if you look at Marcus Rashford last season, he, he did save himself for the big games. Yeah. Uh, you know, the goal he scored away at City, his contribution to the second goal scored by Cobby in the FA Cup final. Arsenal away. And, yeah, and there were moments when he caused Liverpool some problems as well. So I absolutely understand the argument. I think if you're picking on form, you should be Ganacho and Ahmed. But if you're picking emotionally and you're thinking maybe there's a moment in this game, then... He just might stick with Marcus Rashford. I think either way, Ganacho will start. Mm. It's a question of whether it's Ahmad who drops the bench mm. or if it's Rashford. I do think Eric Ten Hag is very reluctant to... He's trying his best not to go down that route with Marcus Rashford yep. in terms of dropping him, taking him off early. He was forced to, into doing it by his performances, though. And for me, Eric Ten Hag's got a really important decision to make to how long he gives Marcus Rashford to start getting up to speed because... Ten Hag's been backed in this summer. We've got a really good window under our hands, which we'll talk a little bit more about later in the show. But if he keeps faith in Marcus Rashford as much as he has done previously with no return, 
I'm not going to say Ten Hag can lose his job only because of Marcus Rashford. It will be that will be unfair. It will be because of the results of the team. But to put that much faith into one player and not sometimes not others, that could really really backfire. And I just hope that doesn't happen. Yeah, I I agree. It would be sad if that if it does backfire. And I do give Ten Hag his props for trying. But I think for me, and I I really don't like to come down too hard on Marcus Rashford because I think. For people, you know, me, myself, being from Manchester, he is, you know, the epitome of Manchester and Manchester United. I do think deep down he has understood the assignment. He's, you know, gone off track a little bit. We've seen behaviour that we're not too happy with, but it's not. It's more a frustration thing than a dislike of him. Because of how well we want yeah, to do. Yeah, because of the potential that this, this guy has. We've seen it, the amount of goals that he can score, and it's just not connecting. Mm. Um, but it is a case of, like, how much time do you give it? And I just think that the time really is running out now. Yeah, time is against him. In terms of Mason Mount, quickly, I, I thought, again, in the first half, he, he pressed well. He did a lot of work, good work off the ball. I think he'd done a lot of good work on the ball. Now, it's not transpiring into goals and assists, and it doesn't look like when Bruno plays there for many different reasons. One, I think he keeps the ball a bit better than Bruno, but he won't have the cherry on top like Bruno, that great ball outside of the boot, someone's through on goal, assists, etc., etc. Is this, he kept his shirt, kept his start in place. Hopefully, he's not injured. But is this a bit of a turnaround in his Manchester United career, or do you just see it as, once the forwards and the number nines get back fit, it's it's as you were. I just don't see where he fits. You know, I don't think it's a lack of endeavour, a lack of application. I don't think it's a lack of ability, to be honest. But it was a strange signing at the time to spend that kind of money in a position where we were already fairly well stocked. Bruno's going to start week in, week out when he's fit, and he's always fit. So, yeah, I just think it's a waste of a transfer fee, to be honest. There's nothing personal against Mason Mount. I think he more often than not upsets the balance of the team when he is in. And You think he upsets the balance of it? Yeah, I do. Well, he certainly did think, last season. Well, I, I, that's weird because I just think... I, I left the game with more questions than answers in terms of, well, actually, the balance of the team I thought with Mason Mount in the 10 looked better. But the balance is wrong because then Bruno has to be a false mm. nine. There's my point. But actually, the team was playing better. When Mason Mount came off at half-time, did you see us? Yeah. Like, that for me was alarming. I, I, and then Bruno went back to the 10. I'm not suggesting that Bruno is surplus and he should be on the bench for Mason Mount, but I, there is a conundrum there where I'm like, there's, there's more questions here than answers. But, but I actually think Mason Mount helped our balance. But it's a conundrum that the club have created themselves. Because Absolutely. Because they spent £55 million pounds on an actual striker, <laughs> we wouldn't be having this conversation and we wouldn't have started the season without a goal scorer up front. So... As I say, I don't blame Mason Mount. I wanted to work out for him because, by all accounts, he's a great lad. He's got the number seven shirt. He's obviously a good role model for the youngsters. I'm just not convinced it is going to work out. And yeah. again, I think if he's going to change the team this weekend, and actually maybe there's an argument to say that against Liverpool, probably the false number nine is That's the game plan. Do. Yeah, exactly. It's one game but if he does it. bring in Joshua Zerksy, I think Mason Mount might be the one to make way. Mm. What do you think, Anne? Do you think that, that, that I, I I completely completely agree with what Cookie's saying here in that the signing just never made sense. When it was announced, I was a bit like, hmm, oh, OK. And it was the first I, side I, of the window as well. I'll, like, yeah, well. I'll, I'll get on board with this, but I don't think I'm sold. And I'm still not sold. And I understand the guys had injuries. I do agree that I think the first half, I think he was good. But I was exactly the same. More questions than answers. How is this going to work? Bruno and Mount, how does this all slot in? And it just comes to a point where you look at it and think, this is a problem that we didn't need to have. Yeah. Mm. And that's what frustrates me about it. I saw uh, Gary Neville kind of given his uh, his recollection of the game, his, his summary of the game, shall I say. And he pointed to the fact that Eric's making a lot of changes to sort of the back four during the game. That doesn't help. Mm. So, some changes not helping. Um, we saw Delit come on again, Crookie. We, obviously, we want to get him up to speed. Um, Tom and he came on late on. How does Eric need to just pick a back four now, or pick a settled team and stick with it, or do you think it's understandable because these guys are new? We as fans don't exactly know where they're at fitness-wise, but a couple of games in now and a good few weeks training, do we need to get some continuity there? Well, I tweeted yesterday saying what I'd like to see against Liverpool is Delit starting. Ugarte starting, assuming the post Straight in. goes through on time, yeah, because there's still a big problem in that midfield. Xerxes starting, high in confidence, having scored in front of the Stretford end last time at Old Trafford. 
they spent 200 million quid. It's gone a little bit under the radar, but it's significant spending again from United. Play the players. Don't keep picking the same players who've let you down previously. And I do think I'm not, I'm not scapegoating him. Harry Maguire was at fault for the first goal. Would that yeah. have happened if De Ligt was playing? I don't know, but I'd like to find out. Yeah, I see what you mean. Is, is it a case of it's time now? Unleash the signings, Angelina? Yeah, like, what's the point in buying them? I, I don't understand this whole thing of like, oh, they need... I understand if it's a fitness thing, but, oh, it's a bedding Players in process. So fit these days. And mm. Exactly. I would like to think to if you're a professional athlete, then you're always... It, you would have seen, I mean, I know there's a few that aren't that we can probably think of, but that frustrates me. It's like, oh, they need a bedding in period or oh, this and that. No, you've paid this money for this player. They should be, you know, they didn't just wake up one day and the move happened. They knew that they were going to be on the move that summer. They knew that they were going to be at a new club. You'd like to think that they were prepared. Just play them. Like, yeah. I don't get this whole, you know, kind of tiptoeing around it. We need these players. That is why we bought them. The other options are not great. So let's just get the ball rolling because then it's going to be, oh, well, they need time to gel and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, if we would have started them, you know, two games ago, then the gelling time would be left. Do you, think, do you think that's a big reason why we lost? Did those subs lose us the game in terms of you changing your centre-half? You know, then the left-back situation was, where was Anthony? It just puts the team, Crookie, into a bit of disorganisation. Even though I know Harry Maguire made mistakes earlier on in the game, but by changing the lit halfway through the second half, well, later on in the second half, does that, does that lose us the game? I think the issue you've got with Ten Hag's in-game management is if you go back to the start of last season, there are a lot of games like this where it's tight, he makes changes to try and see out a point. And it never, <laughs> it never works. United end up conceding a late goal. It happened at Wembley in the Community Shield. It happened again at Brighton. I, I do agree with Gary Neville. I think bringing on the lit for the last 10 minutes... But when do? you're trying to yeah. defend a point, uh, I think it does risk upsetting the balance at the back four. So I think he's absolutely right. I understand that he was probably trying to play his way in. I don't actually get the McTominay sub because 24 hours later, they've accepted a, a bid from Napoli. So it's pretty clear he's not going to be part of the furniture. Mm. And Bruno off for him as yeah, well. Yeah, and then that really handed the initiative to Brighton. In his first season, I remember being at the, uh, the Barcelona game at Old Trafford and he made some changes at half-time in that game and it was a brilliant night and United have won it. He got his in-game changes right more often than not in the first season. He's really struggled with that from mm. that point forward. From the start of last season to now, his in-game management is questionable. Yeah. Well, guys, let us know how you guys feel at home about the game uh, against Brighton. Can we put it right? We'll be talking about that a little bit later. Now, there's only one day left of the summer transfer window, and as we know, a lot can happen in that time. Deadline day is nearly upon us. Crookie Manuel Garte looks like he's through the door. We've seen on social media he's been smuggled through the back door mm. of some of uh, Manchester United's uh, Manchester United Manchester's uh, finest places to go out in. Um, but numbers-wise, with Ugarte, um, what's what's the what's the number crunching looking like with him coming in? Well, it, I think it's a good deal that they've managed to, to talk PSG down to accepting uh, less up front and then add-ons on top, taking it to around about the initial valuation, but PSG wanted more money up front, so it's going to be a £50 million transfer uh, eventually. If all uh, the add-ons, yeah. And they'll be delighted to pay the add-ons because they're, they're performance uh, incentivised. So I think, again, it's a shrewd piece of business for United to get a player who solves a problem that's been there for a long time. He was in the team of the tournament at the Copper America, so we, this is certainly not a dud they're signing. And I think if you look at, even at the weekend... Kobe Mainu was running on empty by the end of the game, not yeah, because of what he was necessarily doing, but because in the second half he was having to do Casemiro's running for him. So I think this is potentially a transformative signing for Manchester United. I'm, I'm really excited about it. Angelina, does that ramp up the pressure? Does that make it sort of like a top four or bust now? We're talking about five players through the door. And if you look at them individually, arguably, five potential starters, really, that we've, that we've signed. Yeah. I mean, I think you said it earlier in the week on Talksport Cookie, like there's no kind of excuses mm. now. He's been um, backed. Th this is it, like you've been backed. As we've discussed, it seems like these are players that were top of the priority list. They've ticked the boxes, they've got the right people. So now I think the pressure is on. I mean, as Manchester United fans, I think everyone wants to see United in the top four. Anyway, fans are already wanting that. But when you look at these names that are coming in, yeah, I mean, the pressure should already be on, but... Especially after a season as bad as last year, press, yeah. Press yeah, the, yeah, the pressure will already be on, but I think for a top four finish, 
you would look back at this season and think, hang on, we signed, we spent how much money? We bought players in pretty much every position that we felt we were lacking and we still couldn't get it over the line. I think for Ten Hag, that is, it really is, I, I agree, the pressure is massively on him now. Mm. Like I say, probably already was, but yeah, huge, huge pressure. But, you know, that's also the pressure of Manchester United. You know, this is a team that needs to be back in the mix for the Premier League title. We've got very good names coming in. So, yeah, all, all of that combined, pressure's on, but that's how it should be. We they should, should be feeling it. this yeah, pressure. Exactly. Yeah, We yeah. wanted to see us move forward in the transfer market. Done. Wanted to get these types of people in uh, and to do what they needed to do and, and, and us feel positive about the team. But in terms of Ugarte individually, Crookies, any doubts about him? What, you know, one season at, um, at PSG, okay, new ideas came in, they went in a different direction, but you know, it was good at sporting before that. Like you mentioned the Copa America, but in terms of coming to the Premier League after one season at PSG, any doubts? I guess the negative and the, and the doubt is, is why PSG is so willing to let him go. But ultimately, I think that was a financial decision, but it's always a, a slight worry when you get another European juggernaut's cast off. You, you ask the question, why did Real Madrid let Casemiro go? Why were they so willing to cash in on Varane? I think we know the answer to both of those. But the flip side is he comes here with a point to prove, yeah. you know, trying to restore his reputation as one of the best holding midfielders in Europe. But it's that position, isn't it, that United have neglected for so long now. I mentioned it last week, probably since Michael Carrick left the football club or retired as a player anyway. So, yeah, it, it's much needed. And uh, I think what's impressive about this summer window is they were pretty clear that, you know, this is a name that's been doing the rounds for a long time now. There weren't really any other targets. They honed in on Ugarte. They bided their time. They were patient to make sure they got the price they wanted and they've got their number one target. Same with uh, Joshua Xerxes in that position. De Ligt was always their top centre-back target as well. So I think Ineos are delivering. And also, if you look at the amount of money they've recouped now for player sales, that Hannibal ended up being a permanent transfer yeah. to Burnley. It was about £120 million in the coffers from departures as well, which again has not been United's strong point in recent weeks. I, I agree with that. And I think that needs talking about more. I mean, this is the beauty of, uh, of our show, is that we can, as United fans, kind of disprove or dispel some myths. of the myths. And it's like... You know, Man United have just done the same wasted money and this, that, and the other. Well, no, hang on a minute. People, you know, try and inflate the prices by maybe just putting it in euros or just it, the add ons saying that the add ons are, you know, are final and that's what's paid now. No, but like you said, Manchester United ended up paying £42 million pounds yeah. up fixed yeah. for Manuel Gatti when they wanted more. They wanted 50. We've nearly pretty much shaved off, not far off 10 mil, yeah. 8 mil straight which, off. Which straight pretty off the much pays for Masrawi, really. Exactly, and that's and I and I'm really pleased that that Ineos have done that because the, one of their main roles for me this year, as I've said many times, is that they had to change our perception in the market. Mm. Ineos, if you're look, now looking at a few people we've dealt with, you ask Newcastle now what it was like to deal with Manchester United for Dan Ashworth. You go to PSG's board and say what was it like. You go to Everton and say what was it like. Even to deal with even Napoli, Na Napoli, Napoli wanted a loan for Scott McTominay orig originally with an option to buy. United were like no chance. You know, we're not, what's the point in that? And they've ended up getting decent money. So it shows. That they're not we're no, soft we're touch. Not, we're not mugs. We're yeah. not mugs anymore. And when you say that out loud, the rivals Angelina are like stupid Man United fans. Are they getting excited just because they bought a cup? They'll still be rubbish. But they can say that. But actually, what what, what our point is is that. We're operating properly again in the market. Or oh, this is the beginning stages of it. And that's something to that's something to be positive about, even away from the pitch. Yeah, definitely. And I think that you look at the way that things have been done, it's a huge positive. So many Man United, Man United haters, I'll call them. Yes. They love to be like, oh, well, you know, you've spent all this money, you've brought in all these players. Look at all the other players that you've brought in. They've all been rubbish, pretty much all of them. So how do you even have positivity that this is going to click this time? But I'm sorry, you could say that for any club. Like, yeah, we have had a good string of bad players, which I'm sure we'll be discussing later, but... You could say that for any, every signing's a bit of a gamble because you you never know what is going to happen. You like to think that you know enough about a player that they're going to come in and be successful. But everyone takes risks and gambles. But I think the Man United haters love to get in there and be like, how can you be, how can you even be... Why are you happy slightly, about this? Yeah, why yeah. are you happy about these signings? Because look at all these <laughs> other rubbish signings you've had. But it is that thing of you look at how Ineos have been working. You look at these names that are in charge of getting these deals done, that's a reason to be positive. It feels like they're planning for the future, doesn't it? They're like well thought out, like yeah. I said, 
this is our target. We're going to wait. We're not just going to pay the first. Mm -hmm. No, as, as fans, we get a little bit itchy and twitchy. Like, oh, just pay the money, just pay the money. Mm -hmm. But actually, that's what's got us into a lot of trouble uh, in, in past season. But now yeah. there seems to be a calmness about We'll, we'll wait. We will we, we'll get the price that we want. And I it's think... not going down the pecking order either. No. Like, yeah. I'm sure you'll know. Like the, There's times when we brought players in, it's like, oh, well, it wasn't our first option. Or it's actually our third option. And you're like, well, why are we bothering then? Mm. Whereas it seems like these names were, were, if not number one, extremely high up on the list. Jason Wilcox boards a flight to Paris and he brings back a player. <laughs> How many times did Ed Woodward board a flight to Spain and the like and brought back come sangria. back with sombrero? Yeah, but, he just yeah. went on holiday, exactly. yeah. Are we, are we beginning... <laughs> Because again, we have to be careful with this. We can't get carried away. But are we starting to dine at the top table again with in terms of you know signings? Well, is that too early? To yeah, say? I think it's too early to say that. I mean, if if, if Erling Haaland <laughs> came on the market and was playing for a foreign club, he probably still goes to Man City over United. Yeah. So I think ultimately, until things improve successful. on the pitch and you start to bring success in terms of regularly playing in the Champions League, regularly challenging for the Premier League title, then there's always going to be a danger. Uh, of missing out on targets. But I think they are operating a, like a proper football club again. But there's no surprise. Dan Ashworth, you know, his CV is impressive. You look at what he did at the FA, you look at what he did at Brighton and at Newcastle. Look, look how much they've struggled this summer. You know, the Mark Gaye deal looks like he's off. Paul Mitchell hasn't been able to get that one over, over the line. They laughed at us. They said there was only one United. They said you can take Daniel's... Daniel, he doesn't, he doesn't do anything, like said. Where's your gay heat? He's got deals done <laughs> and, uh, and Paul Mitchell is floundering up in the northeast. Look at that, mate. Look at that. Before we move on for a guy, uh, from Ogate, sorry. Um, I just wanted to discuss quickly, Angelina, what you think this means, this move means for Kobe Mainu um, and Casemiro in our midfield. Does it mean Casemiro's out and Ugarte's in? It's that simple. Does it mean we can rejig things depending on what game it is? Or how, how do you see him fitting in? It's about having options. And how often have we not had those options in that area of the pitch? For me personally, I like that Casemiro has come in looking better than last season. Yes. That is a huge positive. Yeah. But you've Hopefully got to be, you've got to be realistic. Like I want this guy to come in for Casemiro. I see him and Kobe working together. Um, but I just think to be able to have that rotation, you know, you've got European football, you've got cup games, you've got Premier League. There's a lot going on, and like I say, to have the option of, right, well, we can play Casemiro in this cup game, no problem, but we've got X Premier League game on the horizon. You know, Agate has to start in that one. Um, and I just see having the legs on this guy is going to be huge for Kobe to not have to be relying on Casemiro, who, let's face it, as much as he's fitter than last season, you know, he's passed it. So mm. I think for me, just having those options... And that support for Kobe is going to be huge because we don't want to see him burning out and we want him to be at his best. And I think having a better player playing with him, you know, it's kind of obvious that it's going to, going to be positive. He's a Zach rookie. Uh, Casemiro, is this the beginning of the end, would you say? Yeah, I think so. I think he's probably still got a, a role to play, maybe in, in European competition in yeah, particular, where the pace experience. of the game is a bit slower and he brings that experience. But... If you're asking me to pick a first 11, then it's going to be Kobe and Ugarte in midfield. I'm really excited to see how that signing unlocks even more from Kobe Mania. Genuinely, I think it's a generational mm. talent. Absolutely. Now, we've heard over the last couple of days <laughs> that uh, <laughs> Sancho and Sterling could potentially switch places. What's the latest that you, you've got on that cookie? I think there's a suspicion uh, amongst the hierarchy at United. Their name's been used a little bit to try and smoke out certain people, not just when it comes to Raheem Sterling, but obviously they were offered the chance to sign Ben Chilwell. Well, they immediately declined that, I'm told. And you've got the Ivan Good. Tony situation. They listened, they listened, they listened to the to show you. last they week. They listened to the stats. And said we cannot be <laughs> entertaining them. But there was a, a story yesterday that they'd inquired about Ivan Tony. That was quickly dismissed to me as well. And again, I think United felt their name was being used to, to try and play some kind of political game. The budget spent... You know, Agate, yeah. Agate is the final paid-for signing. If they could shift on Sancho, yes, and then maybe they, they might contemplate taking on Raheem Sterling, but I think it makes more sense for Chelsea than it does for United at this moment. In fact, I, no, I don't. <laughs> Sancho's a bonkers <laughs> signing for Chelsea. Makes no sense what for anybody. What from there? Yeah. Makes no sense for anybody. I think Sancho goes to Juventus. Yeah. That's it. If, if you're a better man, you'd, you'd probably go with that. Angelina, the, the Sterling situation. Let's just speak hypotheticals. This, this has just have been so talked about over the last few days mm. within the United fan base. And I've seen some really interesting opinions on this. Mm. Some United fans are saying, absolutely not. What on earth would we be thinking? 
Why on earth would we do that? Some other fans are saying, listen, hear me out on this. Would it be a dream or a disaster? Disaster is a, a big word. <laughs> disaster is a very big <laughs> word. It would be the total wrong move. Uh, can I say that instead? It, it, it yeah. would. It would. <laughs> is that so? Is that a disaster then? <laughs> it would. Total wrong move sounds oh, a bit disastrous. This is hard. It would be. <laughs> you made me feel bad now. For <laughs> It would be a disaster. Okay, you know what? You know what? Let's just go with it. Yeah. Why Disa would it be a disaster? disaster? I want to say Raheem Sterling, I think, has been a brilliant player. I think he seems... I've never met him personally, but he seems like a very likeable person. He has been a brilliant footballer. He has been brilliant for England. You're talking about him like he's 48. I it? know, I know. He, well, a I'll, lot of this get is there, past I'll get tense. there, I'll get there. He has been, but at the end of the day, when you look at his numbers... He has been in decline. He's 29, he'll be 30 in December. 30. But humour me on this one. If I was to say, would you want to sign Sadio Mane? What's the first doubt that comes into your head? Mm. Age. Age. Not at it right now. Past his best. So he has only played 11 more games in his career than Raheem Sterling. Raheem Sterling's played 549 games. That means that he's it, got experience, no? It does mean he's got experience, but it means that he's played a lot of football. And when you have a winger that is relying on pace, I, do, I think you have to take that into consideration that this is a 29-year-old about to turn 30, but in reality, I, I don't know about his personal fitness, but you, you have to be realistic. Definitely this is probably intense. more likely a 32-year-old in, in some respects. That's one thing that, that worries me a little bit. I think that, like I say, he's, he's been brilliant over the years, but his numbers, when you look at the goals and assists, they are dropping. I know it's not been easy at Chelsea, but for me, I don't see bringing Raheem Sterling in for somebody like Marcus Rashford, who, as much as we have criticised him, still was capable of scoring all those goals the other season. Raheem Sterling is nowhere close to that, and I just personally don't see him getting to that level of, you know, scoring 30 goals or something. Mm. I just don't see it happening, and it's nothing towards him because, like I say, he seems like a, a very good person, and I think he's had a great career, and I hope that he figures it out. But for those reasons, it just doesn't add up in my head. We'll get to Santo in just a second, but Crookie... I heard you sort of interjecting there, sort of saying, well, that means his experience, <laughs> or that means this, that means that. Why, would, why, why, why could it work? Or could... Listen, if, if, you if, could, if you could make it work. If the only way to get rid of Jaden Sancho is to sign Raheem Sterling, sign me up. Really? Yeah, he's a massive improvement on Sancho in terms of his attitude, in terms of what he's done over the course of his career, in terms of the fit. Wages? Uh, well, wages, there's not much in it, but obviously... they're both going to they're, <laughs> they're, they're both gonna have to take a pay cut, which is pro well, probably is not going to happen because mm -hmm. he's got three years left on his deal, Raheem Sterling. I think he feels badly treated by the owners at Chelsea, so they're going to need to pay him an awful lot of money to go away. But if you're asking me, would I rather see United run out against Liverpool on Sunday with Sterling or Sancho in the team, I would go for Sterling. I genuinely would go for Raheem Sterling. Yeah, I get that. I think my, my only concern with Jadon Sancho going to Chelsea is... The main thing is we need to sell this guy. We need to sell this guy fast. If he went to Chelsea for the season, is he going to be displayed enough to kind of drum up enough interest? Do you know what I mean? Because mm. the amount well, of options... Well, he start options, at Chelsea, basically? Yeah, the amount of options that Chelsea have got... No. <laughs> that's my only thing. Like, we need to, like, get him, yeah. you know, front of house. But the problem with that is, is also, if he goes to Juventus, they're proposing a loan as well. Man United mm. want an obligation. Yeah. But at least so, a loan with Juventus, mm. would he maybe play more with them? Yeah, but we've and been there, has... done that with Dortmund, and here we are True. again. It just basically yeah. kicked the can the down the road. The problem is, is it, it comes down to money. Um, I mean, one of the biggest... Issues I have with this signing, I've got two big, big takes on it. And the first one is that it goes against it what Ineos are trying to build. I think that's the main thing for me. If we strip away that's the why accolades... That's I don't think it will happen, by the correct, way. Correct. I think for Ineos to come in and be this strong on the direction that we're going in, younger players... I'm not going to question Raheem's hunger because I do believe that is there. The wage structure, we're trying to get a hold of that. I think it goes. I think it's something the old Man United would do. I really, really do. And I think we've evolved past that. Yeah. However, as on a personal, I do have a soft spot for Raheem. Mm. I'm a local boy to, to Wembley. 
all Man United fans are from London, apart from the real ones like Angelina. Um, he comes from the same borough as me. His Jamaican roots and heritage, and I think the way he's been treated in the media has been disgusting. And yeah. I actually think he's he's one of the most disrespected players of this generation as well when it comes to England as well. So I have that little bit of a soft spot. And actually, Cookie, I agree with you. In terms of right now with the output that Marcus Rashford's given us, if we had to play against... Well, when we play against Liverpool on Sunday, if you say Raheem Sterling has to play that game, right now between him and Marcus Rashford, there's... There, would probably be better with, with Raheem Sterling playing with how Marcus Rush was playing. But Garnacho is fantastic. But I just feel that for the project of what we're trying to do, it goes against everything that, we're, that we are. And look, Raheem's had a bad couple of years at Chelsea. But I would second that with, look how many managers he's played under. Who's been good in that time? Cole Palmer's been a revelation now. They're starting to get a little bit more calm. Mm. But, you know, I, I know he's a better player than what is being portrayed. This is a player who scored 136 Premier League goals. Like, he's very, very... Four Premier Leagues. Mm. But our squad, if he was in it, he'd, our squad wouldn't be any worse. However, with the, with the wages that are attached and the deal that it would be, I think we should stay well clear. Mm. That's, that's where I'm at with it. I think you make a, a brilliant point uh, about the upheaval at Chelsea because I think I'm right in saying that at Liverpool, he only really played under Brendan Rodgers. At City, he had Pep Guardiola as a constant presence in the dugout. And all of a sudden... He goes to Chelsea, he's had four managers. So I think he has struggled with that. Yeah. If you go back to the first day of last season, they played Liverpool, I think I'm right in saying, and he was excellent in that game. There was talk that he might be included in the, the England squad for that September international break. So I, I'm not going to write him off as a has-been, mm. much mm. like my, yeah, <laughs> my young co-host has. Yeah. Um, if right. 30 is over the hill, I'm in big trouble, by the <laughs> way. You are, yeah. Big, big. Yeah, it's making it sound old, right? Um, depends how you look after yourself, doesn't it, Crookie? Yeah, um, I'm definitely in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of some of the worst signings post Fergie, I mean, we're talking about Sancho potentially leaving and it just got us thinking. What are some of the worst signings post Fergie? Is Sancho in that? So we're going to go with, with a... I don't even want to call this a top three. It's a all flop like, three. It, oh, a flop three. Ooh, there you I go. like it. A flop three. Yeah. Um, Man United, have, we've spent an awful lot of money, over a billion pounds since Sir Alex has left the football club. We've wasted some money on some big names some not-so-big names. Honestly, there's been some bad ones. Angelina, we'll start with you. Give me, give me your three players who you would put at the top of your flop list since post-Fergie. Post For me, Paul Pogba. Mm. Just because the excitement of the return, the fanfare of it, you're thinking, you know, one of the, you know, one of the most talked-about names in European football, he's back at Man United. And he, it just never clicked for me personally. I just never saw the Pogba that I was expecting. It was a huge, huge disappointment. And then I think for, for the club, you know, you've let him go. I think we were talking about earlier, you know, you let him go for nothing. You pay all this money for him and then he goes for nothing as well. Mm. I think it's just a disaster in every single category. So Pogba would be one. Okay, who, the other two, who you got? Other two, I'm going with Alexis Sanchez. <laughs> it was, It was just... Need you say more? Uh, do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, Need you again, say more. the fanfare of it with the piano and getting the number seven and all this stuff that was going on, and it was just, and the the dogs and the Instagram, and it was all it was just it was a mess. Yeah, it was an absolute mess. The only positive was uh, the Henry McTarian swap thing. We got rid of him. So, <laughs> you know, like, there was that's yeah. the one thing we can take from it. But no, another one that was just built up to be something and was just a complete disaster and just never got off the ground and really was just like, what are we doing? It yeah, was very disappointing. It wasn't, it wasn't the one. And your last one? Now, it was... I was battling with myself with Anthony Marshall, who I've spoken about before on this show, my frustrations that he managed to claw and cling on to the club for as long as he did. Um, but I think I am going to go with Jadon Sancho. And it's, I'm kind of going with a similar theme of these three of the expectation yeah. versus reality being like night and day. Um, again, we got Jaden Sancho. He was in demand. We are expecting an absolute... You know, you look at these other players that have come off the Dortmund conveyor belt. You look at Haaland, you look at Jude Bellingham. Absolute superstars. <laughs> You've got Jaden Sancho. Like that, it? And it's just been a complete flop. So I think those three, just for the expectation versus reality, the most disappointing, yeah. frustrating ones. OK, Crookie, give us your three. 
Well, I've got to agree on Paul Pogba. Yeah. Um, he was let go from the football club by Sir Alex Ferguson, who is a, pretty, a pretty good judge of players <laughs> because he didn't like his attitude. He came back for a huge amount of money. He still had a poor attitude. And then he left again on a free transfer. And I think the frustration with him is clearly he had the talent. Bags of it. You know, you look at that game against Man City, the Etihad, when he, he, he turned it around on his own. I remember actually being at Watford. I think it was Ollie's last game. Last game, yeah. And he came off the bench, Pogba. Yeah. And he basically played for himself, but he was the best player on the pitch. You think, well, why don't you do that every week? And he goes, mm -hmm. where France. chips are down. You know, he's, he's won major honours with France. So attitude was shocking. Mm -hmm. Meant he didn't apply himself properly. So I, I think that was unfulfilled talent. And mm -hmm. Actually, if you look at where he is now, Paul Pogba, and there's probably a little bit of a, a microcosm of his entire career. So Paul Pogba is in there for me. Anthony Martial, I'm going to stick in. 50 million down the drain, you know, that's the song. But actually, it's true. It, yeah. it was an absolute waste of money. Uh, signed on transfer deadline night. I think Jim White was still working for Sky then when it was, uh, yeah. you know, an entertainment channel on deadline day. And there was so much furore around him, this kid who could maybe win the Ballon d'Or. A lot of the add-ons actually Got the were, claws in it, mate. We're sending yeah. around that. Wait, what year do you think Monaco went for? We ain't getting that. <laughs> <laughs> What's your... 2016, well, then, yeah. But then he got a new contract. <laughs> yeah, you know, he started off really well. Absolutely, brain the He scored against Liverpool. Yeah, actually, at least he gave us moments. That's what I was going to say. But yeah. again, by the end, he down tools and he wasn't trying to get fit last season. He wasn't even that bothered, was, that bothered was the to turn up and watch thing games. About it. Yeah. The injuries just hit him like a ton of trains. Yeah, like but train he, he, wasn't, just, he wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't trying to get yeah. fit. Where is he now, by the way? He's still a free agent. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason for that. Uh, third, third one. <laughs> again. Not necessarily about talent, this. There's a common theme here because yeah. they're all good players who didn't apply themselves. Angel Di Maria, I just saw as such a wasted transfer. Mm. I was at his debut against QPR. He was absolutely sensational that night. Even the game against Leicester, the, the, the game that actually kicked them into life as eventual Premier League champions. Vardy scored his first goal in the Premier League that day. 3-0 yeah. up and lost 5-3. He was brilliant for the first half in that game as well. I think for him, the biggest regret is what might have been because he is a sensational player. Yeah. And I, I just feel like the football club, Van Gaal was the manager at the time, mm -hmm. probably just didn't manage him on a human level correctly. Yeah, and after and that that's situation, why I think away. at his house, I think he... Yeah. Didn't got, have to be the end, didn't, though. No, didn't have to be the yeah, end. Yeah, it could have been a better one. I mean, for me, I've, I fly through mine really quickly. I'm sorry, guys. I know it's still part of the, the new school Man United. Anthony, mate. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. Like, I, you know, some, some people could be watching and saying, listen, there's still something there. Give him a bit more time in his third season now. I don't see it. I, I, I see a player very, very limited in ability. I see a player who, in terms of mentality-wise, I think has a bit of a strut. Like, you know, it's going to happen. But he believes in himself. Yeah, I give him that. Um, He's the only one. And I, and I, yeah, he backs himself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, give him that, he, he backs believes. himself. And I've, I hope I'm wrong. I hope by the end of this season, miraculously, I go... He'll get oh, a hat-trick now. You know, that. oh, great. You know, he yeah. gave us an amazing moment against Liverpool last time out, by the way, which was, which was brilliant. But he is way up there. In you know, north of £80 million. Absolutely shocking. Um, so for me, I, he's up there. Um, I've got, obviously, Sanchez. Lex Sanchez, you've spoke about that. Um, and the other one for me was Donny van der Beek, actually, which sounds Ooh, really harsh. that's a good one. Sounds really harsh because I love the guy. I feel sorry that it didn't work out. But actually, in terms of coming to the club, you know, with a lot of expectation, I know the price wasn't astronomical. It felt like a bit of a snip to get him at that price. But, but remember how excited we all were really about excited, that signing. And it just nothing, no moments, no, no iconic goals. No, you know, that day when we beat this team up, I can't, re I can't remember one I'm, game. I'm genuinely <laughs> trying to think of the same. We lost against Palace. Did he? Uh, yeah. Cry, I'm trying to think of the moment me. that I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's sad. I think the most damning indictment there is that, obviously, he was signed by Oli. When Ten Hag comes in, you think, well, he played under him at yeah. Ajax. This is, this is going to be a marriage <laughs> yeah. made in yeah. heaven. And he dropped him pretty yeah. quickly. And you think, oh, exactly. you've got no chance, yeah. fella. Well, if he's not picking you, I, it, you've got no you're chance. Done. Exactly, yeah. absolutely no chance. So that's, that's, that was, that's awful for me. Mm. Um, in terms of away from transfer fees, though, back to homegrown players, just to Scott McTominay really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, he's left I the club. going to put him in the flop. No, 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 no. <laughs> absolutely not, absolutely not. Um, look, 255 games for Man United. Um, come through the academy, gets what it means to play for Man United. Um, how big of a miss is he going to be for, for Man United? Um, I think he'll be a miss in the dressing room. And I think, unlike Van der Beek, he did come up with some big moments um, last season. You know, he, he was always there to score an important goal. He did it for Scotland as well. But I got a bit of stick for saying this on TalkSport. Perry Groves wasn't happy. I think if, 
if United want to kick on and get back to, you know, challenging for the top four, challenging for titles, realistically, Scott McTominay isn't going to be part of that journey. When you hear Rio Ferdinand say you need players, he said on his podcast, yeah, I get, I, I get you the need argument. players like this, you need a park, you need, and that might be disrespectful with park, but, you know, you need a Darren Fletcher, you need a John O'Shea. Do you know what? I 100% get that, but all those, Neville, all those players you've named yeah. had superstars around them. If Scott McTominay played in a Ferguson team, we'd probably be talking about him like we do Darren Fletcher and John O'Shea. Mm -hmm. He hasn't, this and I don't United, think he's good enough to carry this team and, and to take us back to where we want to go. Azeem, do you think we'll miss his attitude, though? In, in a time when Manchester United's been quite torrid in terms of how to conduct yourself, how to turn up and do your job um, with, with no controversy, will we, will we miss that around the change room for some of the younger players and senior players? Yeah, of course. I've heard a lot about, you know, the way that he would carry himself at Carrington and the way that he would, you know, approach, like, the younger players and stuff like that. And he w he was really helpful and stuff. But is that a reason to keep a player at your football club? No, it's not. Mm. The fact that he's been there since he was five, call me callous, but I, I, I don't really care. Um, <laughs> like, that, that's great. That's great. And, and really best of luck to him. And he did give us some great moments. But I've spoken about it before. This is excellent business because you have to cut the cord. His contract was getting ready to expire. We needed to get rid of him for some money. You have to look, if Man United want to be competing with Manchester City, Liverpool, Arsenal, you have to kind of look at the moves they're making and think, are we in that same bracket? You know, is, would, Scott McTominay be playing for an Arsenal for us. I understand that we're not at the same level as them, but if we want to get to that level, you've got to start looking at, at things almost in that head, like put your city cap on. Do you, could you see this for them? No, it's not the standards for them, so it shouldn't be the standards for us. I agree that he did some great things. I get what Rio was saying. If Man United were a team competing at the top and you had the stars around, I get it. But this was a situation where he simply is not good enough, to Simple be completely as. honest. And true. you have to cut that cord, make smart business, get some money for somebody who's been at the club all his life. And that's it. You've just got to keep it moving. If we want to be w lifting a Premier League trophy at some point, you have to start realising what's working and what's not. And whilst he did work in some capacities getting those 10 goals, overall, he wasn't good enough. Ruthless. I think she's right, though. Yeah. Ruthless, I think yeah. she's spot yeah. on. Yeah. And actually, it helped pay for Agarte as there well. Yeah. Them. yeah, and time will tell. Hopefully, we're not sitting back thinking, oh, this is Agarte, guys. Oh, I've got McTominay. I was going to say, that's going to get clipped <laughs> up if that exactly. happens. But, um, <laughs> no, I, I do hear what you're saying. It's a, it's a shame, but I think it's a natural uh, ceiling and shelf life that's, that's kind of been, it's been reached. Now it's time to look ahead to a massive derby day this Sunday. It needs no introduction, but we'll give it one anyway. Manchester United taking on Liverpool this Sunday at Old Trafford, the biggest rivalry in English football. And we've had to bring through none other than my good friend, rapper and massive Liverpool fan, Young and what's happening, man? What's happening, man? How are you doing? <laughs> Thanks for being brave enough to come through because the last time we done some Liverpool previews, you, was, you were giving it, mate, three times over last year. I thought we wasn't going to talk about that, but... Um, <laughs> yeah. I said I'll come here, like, and be very chill today. But I'm very confident. Good, all right. I'm very confident. Right. That's what I want to hear. Before we get into the football, though, it is good to catch up, man. What's, what's been happening? What's, 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 what's happening in Young's life right now? Good, actually. Good. Um, back to work. Back to releasing music. It's been a very long time, so... Um, I've got a new project coming out. Uh, September the 20th, so... You've got a name or is it not yet? It yeah, I've got a name. Yeah. It's called Every Choice Has an Invoice. Oh, OK. Yeah. Every choice has an invoice, you know. Quite a cool name. I've had it for like <laughs> four years. We're waiting to use it at the right time, so... I like that. Yeah, good. That's what we want to see. Yeah. Um, That's right. a good name for United's transfer. Place. <laughs> 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 that. that is true. <laughs> <laughs> the invoicing's invoicing now. We've got Ineos. It's different now, mate. Yeah? We're a serious club again. Oh, uh, uh, no messing about. Bro, we're, it's different. Okay. It's, it's completely different. Um, look, how, for you, though, how, how big is this game? You know, every, every year, uh, Man United, <laughs> Liverpool, of course, it's a huge game. But for you, I know you've yeah. got aspirations of the league and, yeah, you know, yeah. this, that and the other. Yeah. How important is this game to you? No, Man United and Liverpool are always a massive game. Always a massive game. Um, obviously, the last few years, I think, we've been going for different stuff. I'm not... Pro bro, no, no, bro, bro, you can say, bro, you we, can say we, what you we, need to say. We've been going for, uh, for different stuff. But I think, it's a, I think it's an extra big game this season because I think it's Arn Slot's first big game as a Liverpool manager. So 
I think it's the real time, first time really that we're going to see him get tested, mm. I reckon. Angelina, how important is it, uh, is it for us to win this game now? Because one, one, lost one is only the third game of the season going into the international break. But we know that narrative's narrative around Man United. And if you get back-to-back -back losses, which Crookie thinks we will, <laughs> get into the international break, people start mm. getting, getting angst. Yeah, it's the worst thing just for an international break to have a, a game that does not go to plan and you end up having a nightmare. I think in a broader um, in, in a broader way for Manchester United, when you look at Ten Hag's first season, that win against Liverpool, which was the third uh, the third game, it set them off on a really good run, and they then ended up beating Arsenal, and we finished third. So I think you then. Look, I'm not saying it's going to be exactly the same or anything, but I think when you look at the momentum that a, winning a game like this can bring, the, the all, all the different positives that it will bring of not just, you know, for the fans, you're beating, you know, arguably your biggest rival. You know, if you have a good game, this is a game that for many Man United will be the underdogs to come out on top, as we saw it last season with those, you know, with those good games against Liverpool. It's... Um, it means a lot. So I think it's very, very important. And when you look at the run that Man United went on last time in Ten Hag's first season, you can't, maybe I'm reaching a bit, but like, <laughs> you, you, to, you never know what that can do and what that can do for a team. Galvanise the squad. Crook, he's only yeah. lost one out of the last five against Liverpool, mm. Eric Ten Hag. Now, yes, that one that it was, obviously, Young and has a T-shirt of that day. He has a mug of that day, the 7-0. He has a... There's a lot of memorabilia around that 7-0. Yeah, um, I do. In a season where we went on to finish higher than Liverpool and get into the Champions League. But um, is, <laughs> but is Ten Hag, is, 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 are these the games that Ten Hag's judged on, though? These big ones? Yeah, and actually, they're the games that he, he tends to bring his, his A game. You know, you look at Man City in the cup final. I thought it was a brilliant uh, tactical job that he did there. Even away from home, the Etihad had last season. He set United up in the first half. They take the lead, all right. Falls away in the second, but they were competitive. They've been competitive against Arsenal at a period when they're probably at their best, what, for the best part of two decades, uh, I would suggest. And, and you mentioned his record against Liverpool. I was at that game uh, on the Monday night. I remember it vividly because I took my two boys to Old Trafford and I was in the pub watching the Brentford game the week before and I got a message from my oldest son saying, we're going to lose 12-0 next week. <laughs> and, and I said, you know what, you might be right. And But we turned up and uh, I remember... A brilliant Manchester United performance. Again, Ten Hag did a real job on Jurgen Klopp that day. So, again, having said we have to be realistic, I'm still going to be optimistic. I, I think United can get something here. I think the more chaotic the game, the better. You look yeah. at the FA Cup game, you look at the 2-2, what we didn't do was give Liverpool the opportunity to get control of the game and dictate it at their own tempo. And again, I think we need to bring the chaos. Does the guy start straight away for you? He does for me, yeah. Straight in, and straight yeah. in. The wall. And actually, after five minutes, I'd like, <laughs> he I'd, needs to. I'd like to see him go right through Mo Salah. <laughs> and, and gear himself to the Old Trafford faithful. Um, young and for you, I mean, look, obviously coming to Old Trafford, it's, it's different. It's different, bro. Like, like I said, the last five meetings, like, we're not, we're not taking. I just remember months. five nil. <laughs> that that don't happen to us at Anfield. No, five no, no. Nil. Yeah, no. Listen, you've given us some horrible, horrible moments, but the most <laughs> recent games, like one out of the last five. Three, three occasions last year, twice at Old Trafford so what, last what year. So what are you counting? The, the FA Cup and... Oh, we derailed Jurgen Klopp's farewell tour. 100%, You bro. never recovered from getting knocked out of the FA this Cup. This guy was like, Trent, he was saying one down, three to go. Exactly. Well. Yeah. <laughs> but do you know what? I think it was a bit too much for Klopp. Is too it, much for uh, the legendary Klopp? Yeah, we've got a new guy in town. His name's Arn Slot. Yeah. We play different football. As you were saying chaotic. I don't think Slot's going to allow that. Have you yeah. seen the football he's been playing? He wants to keep the Talk board. us through it. How, how are Liverpool looking? You've, how you've, do you think you've played gonna... Ipswich and Brentford? <laughs> if, if those two don't finish in the bottom five, it, it's true. I'd be shocked. But we have the Dutch Pep. That's what I like to call it. Oh, them. this is what you're the doing. Dutch so, Pep. This is what you're doing. No, this is what you're doing. He likes See? to control the game. So when we got the ball, ball guy from Eredivisie, who's actually won more <laughs> titles than your guy, he's nobody. But now you get the ball guy from Netherlands. He's the Dutch Pep. Is that what we're doing? Flex, you don't want Ten Hag in right now. I know I you do. don't. You don't. Bro. I do. You honestly don't. Do you realise Arnold's going to get a baptism of fire, bro? Do you understand what Flex. he's about to realise? Flex. What? I know you. You can't. I want Ten Hag here. I do. Wait, wait, where? where? What? I want Ten Hag here. As manager team. of Manchester United. Yes. And guess what? He's also going to show. <laughs> he's going to show on a slot. There's only room for one bold, bold Dutch, Dutch manager here. Oh, yeah. Okay. And it's him. It's gonna, bro. Do you know what's gonna happen, right? 
Every time we go into this game, yeah. right, especially of late, everybody outside the fan base, even sometimes within, are like, Man United are in big trouble. How are they going to compete? I think you've done that to yourself this season, though, because I think at the start of the season, I think everyone was writing Liverpool off. Arn Slot coming in, they was like, oh, we lost Klopp. We ain't made no signings. That's all everyone's been saying. Liverpool ain't signed no one. Signed the great Chiesa now. He'll be on the bench on Sunday. Yeah, he'll he'll be on the bench on Sunday. Um, (laughs) But yeah, like, we was getting a lot of stick. And then you guys went and lost last week. Danny Welbeck. Bro, he always scores against us. That's fine. But I'm talking about Liverpool, Man United at Old Trafford. Okay. And and what we're saying is, in recent times, bro, you don't come here and run up on us like that before. (laughs) Under Oli, yes. You haven't beaten us at home (laughs) under Eric Ten Hag. Until Yeah, the great Jurgen Klopp couldn't do it. And Kobe Mainu. Okay. Yeah, you're talking about star boys, yeah? Uh, uh, your star boy, he don't even want to sign a new deal. Do you know, Trent, do you know, Trent's do you know, come through the cap. Mate, you know he's, the he's is, arguing with Arnold Slot. Do you know what the problem is with Manchester United? And I think you guys will, if you're being honest, you'll agree with me. This is what you guys do to players. What? You extra gas up players. Is he generational? Who? Kobe Mainu. Let Kobe grow. <laughs> let Kobe grow. How much grow. do you rate him? Let, I think he's a very good player. But let him grow. Let him do something. Would you do something? <sighs> Put it in the top corner against Liverpool. FA Cup final winning goal. Answer to England's midfield problems. Do something. Answer to England's midfield problems. Absolutely. Did you, did we you lost. see it? Did you see it? Because your boy wasn't. Trent wasn't, mate. He weren't the answer in midfield. He should have been playing. I don't know why he was playing in midfield. <laughs> I, don't know, I, don't know, I don't know why Gareth was playing in midfield. He's what, right what, have, what have we got to worry about then? Talk to us about how Liverpool are going to be, you know, destroying Man United. Uh, well, I think Mo Salah is looking as sharp as he's looked in a very, very long time. Very sharp. I don't know if it's the new haircut. I don't really know <laughs> what he's been doing in the summer. But no, all, all, all jokes aside, I think Mo Salah's looking the real deal. I think he's looking like 17, 18 Mo Salah. Um, so I think you've got to worry about him. Diogo Jota, fit, firing. Nunes he's a on... problem, Jota. Big yeah, problem, he's yeah. a problem. Nunes on the bench. I, I love Diaz. Um, this year, I want to see him get more goals. Um, McAllister, world class. So he's got he's got some work to do for me. Graven Birch, I'm not sure about him in that, that DM role. I think we should play Endo against you. Please do. Trent, you don't want that. Please do. Trent, whoo. He mentioned Nunez there. <laughs> I got my favourite reply to a tweet ever yeah. this week when I put out a tweet saying that reports linking Darwin Nunez to Arsenal yeah. were quotes wide of the mark. And somebody came back and said, much like he's finished. <laughs> I thought that would be the most I frustrating guy. <laughs> Never can't hit a target. Um, Angelina, look. He's, he's just he's just rattled off some names there, right? Of why we should be absolutely. Is Trent still sulking? Or he's gonna be all right. He's <laughs> gonna be okay. Yeah. He wasn't. He, he wasn't. Got over he it. wasn't even sulking. The kid just wants to play football. Like, so why he, is he getting he, hooked then? Why is he getting so hooked crazy? by, by, it's by it's the? It's not great though. Is it crack, no. crack showing in manager no, play relations? You know what's already? crazy? Oh. When, I, when I saw that, that made me happy because I think of like teams like Manchester United, yeah, and your star players faking injuries. Who? Who's faking injury? How many times has Marcus been on the floor? Got a knock. <laughs> Arts into in big games. Got a knock. What? What? He's game just not it? playing well. Was it the the FA Cup when he asked to come off? It was the FA Cup, wasn't it? No, he was as knackered. The semi final against Se- Coventry. Yeah. yeah, and he was. He was playing terrible. Good, he had to come off. <sighs> We're gonna be fine. Angelina, for for us, <sighs> you know, he's, he's 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 confident. He's he's spoke yeah. about the threats. What about our threats? How can we how can we take the game to Liverpool? I mean, I, I get it. I, I get there's some names there. There's some scary names. Um, but I think it's all about, as we've discussed, these new signings. Um, I think that Crookie made a really good point. When you look at Joshua Zerksey, the confidence that it will give you scoring a goal in front of the Stratford end is absolutely huge. Even the new players coming in, everybody, the, the way that Ten Hag has played this game against Liverpool before, everybody will understand the assignment for this. They should understand the assignment. I think that if you... The main thing for me, that back four's got to be solid. I don't want to see the chopping and changing like mm. we saw with Brighton. So what, just go with Delit straight away? Yes, yeah. in, in my opinion, I think so. Um, I think you, you look at a player like Kobe Mainu, he's absolutely brilliant. I think that he will cause problems. Um, and I think you look at the what they end up doing with the wingers. I agree with you, Cookie. I think that it will be probably Garnacho on the right, Rashford on the left. As much as we've talked about Marcus Rashford, again, you can't, you, can't, you can't write him off, you can't write him off. So um, I, there are some scary names in, in that Liverpool team, but I think Man United, on their day, understanding the assignment, 
at Old Trafford, I don't think that you could. You can't just automatically write them off. They have the this, potential. That's what you do. They have the potential well, right, to do off. something special. He, he always writes us off. I would say. No, you always think. Can, can, I, can I be honest with you? I'm still not sold on that Liverpool midfield. By the way, you, you've listed off some names there. I think it was your your problem in the second half of last season. I don't think it's a stellar midfield. <sighs> the Man United midfield. Kobe Mainu, we've and, already extolled his virtues. And who else? And Agate, probably. I'd imagine. Bruno Fernandes. Fernandes. Yeah. Honestly. What? Did you see his goal against you last time? <laughs> Did you see it? Did you see it? And is he going to be playing up front or is he going to be playing in the middle? Doesn't matter where he's playing. It doesn't matter whether he's playing left back. <laughs> where is he going to play? It doesn't matter where he's playing left back. He will have a massive impact on the game against you in a positive way. In a, oh, like you said, like, in a positive like, way. Because like you you're going to go. He's going to moan. He's going to. He's going to lead. Look, well, he's honestly, going to do a trend and start kicking off. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe. But do you know what? I'll be, on, I'll, be, I'll be so honest. The only player in that Man United squad, I'll be, this is me being dead honest. Yes. All biasness aside. You know what I said about Marcus before? Marcus, Correct. Has, Marcus has let me down. Yes. Marcus has let yeah, me I've down. Said I said Marcus was better than Saka. Yeah. It was me or AI. Someone said Marcus <laughs> was better than Saka. Yeah. I, I, he, he, he's really let me down. Yeah. He's, he's really let me down. And because I think he's got so much potential. Yeah, I think if anybody can turn up against Liverpool, it's him. Mm. Hope it's not, but it's him. So you'd be pleased to see him starting on the bench? Oh, 100%. Yeah. You could start uh, Garnacho and... Ahmad. Ahmad. You're, not, you're not scared or, of Garnacho? Honestly, you guys, that's another player you guys are overhyping. Overhyping? He's OK. No, he's not OK. Do you know who's a very good young player? Okay. Cole Palmer. These are very good young yeah, players. He's unbelievable. Yeah. Is what he is. But God, Nacho is just okay. <laughs> no, he's very good. For his young age, do you know? I'll tell you what, do you want to get into that? Because your guy, Diaz. Oh, yeah, what a player. I've been doing some stuff about, oh, what a player. Do you know that last season, yeah. their numbers are very, very similar, mate. 35 plus appearances each on the left hand side. I'll, I'll, right? I want six goals, five goals, five and six assists, respectively. One's 27, I wanna, one's 20, mate. I, I so let's just, talk. I just want to say something. I, I heard something like yeah, yeah. in the back. I heard something. I heard you guys were talking about Raheem Sterling maybe coming to Man United. And yeah. This is how I know you guys love Marcus Rashford. You're just going back to it, talking about numbers. Sterling actually scored more goals than Rashford in the Premier last season. But I, I said, yeah. I literally said Sterling could no, come no, in now no, and give us more. Rashford, but, Rashford but, took but a year off. I said it. That. <laughs> yeah, Rashford yeah, went playing last year, bro. No, it's true. He went playing. He's but, but, the but, but, but my point is, Man United fans gas up their players so much. Like we're gonna blindside the terrible season. How many goals did God actually score last season? No, that's what I'm saying. One less than Diaz. One less than Diaz. One less than Diaz, bro. Same amount of assists. One less than Diaz. Who won the bigger? Who won the bigger prize last season? Klopp or Ten Hag? What was the prize? The FA Cup. Yeah, with... You didn't care about it now, go on. Mm. You, after you beat Arsenal in the, at the Emirates in the FA Cup, it looked like you cared to me. When we were playing our youth it team. It looked like you cared to me. We, we, I was so excited for our youth team coming through. Of course I'm going to care. <laughs> we're, play, we're playing 16 year guys, you see what they do. We're playing 16 year Changing the narrative. No, we're not, we're not play, changing the narrative. Go on, Nacho is OK. I'm so glad you're saying this. OK. Watch what he does. No, no, no. He's, he's, got, he's got potential. He's OK. No. He's not a star. He's a... He's a He's, he's a not a Wayne good, Rooney. He has, no, 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 no. He's no. not. He has the potential to be, achieve great things. He does. He has the potential. Potential, he has to do so, what so, he needs so to do. Let me ask you a question. If, if, if you guys did sign Raheem Sterling, for example, mm. yeah, would he not be Man United's best winger? Now, Troy no. Deeney said no. this. No. I feel like right now, he wouldn't be. Who would be better than him? Ganacho. Only, oh, only Ganacho. But I tell you what, though, I will, I will admit this, like I said, with the oh, way Rashford's is... performing. Anthony, there's nothing. Sancho, there's nothing. Sterling would <laughs> would be there. Bro, before Sterling's gone to Chelsea, you guys got to remember, he's won the league for City on that last game of the season. Correct. Against Villa. Yeah, he's come off the bench and won the league for them. Is he still the same Raheem? Can How we many still years get the ago same? was that? That's yeah. Three he's years had, ago now. He, oh, he's had a nightmare yeah. at Chelsea. I agree. He's a, anyone who, Apart from Cole Palmer, who's performing in that Chelsea team? Kaiseido, 100 odd. Would you have him back at Liverpool? I would, you know. Would other Liverpool I would. fans? <laughs> Not the rest of the fan base, but I would. So right now, would you have him instead of Chiesa? Oh no, Chiesa! No, <laughs> of course not. The great Chiesa. Listen, I'm I'm very happy with that signing. Ten mil, ten point nine mil. Bargain. Ooh, what? He's near a ten actually. Yeah. 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 What? What? Low cost. Was you guys not? Um... Honestly, Ineos. Got Ganacho, mate. How did Ineos let that slip? Got Ganacho. You don't. Our signings are cool. Don't you worry about us. We've made a lot of signings. Yeah, Dilip. I know he's a good unlike... signing for you guys. Oh, sorry. Um, the right back, Masrawi. Yeah, Masrawi. Right. He's a good player. 
Oh, thank you for that. You'll no, see he's him. Not you'll see him. I like Dalo as well. Yeah, you, you'll see him lock down Luis Diaz. Oh, no, stop it, honestly. Masrari will lock him down. You do uh... know that. Right? You have. What's funny about this song is that you have no idea. Like, I wish we could like, like speak to you on Monday or something. Maybe I might organise that you, you like... because I, I need the apologies. I need. No flex. Do you know what it is? It was all emotional last year when that Klopp thing happened. It was emotional. Where everyone got in. I don't know if Klopp should have announced it, mm. like, but. Um, he's the greatest Liverpool man since I've been alive, so I'm not going to... Well, it's not difficult, is it? Huh? Not difficult. <laughs> nah, not difficult at all. Uh, <laughs> first manager to really You're bring happiness. You're going to go for Roy, Roy Evans? No? Nah, definitely not. Oh, I thought you were going to say Roy Hudson for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Klopp. But I, I really like Onslaught. And I think, he's, I think he's composed. I think he plays a different style of football, which favours the players we have now, keeping the ball. I think the end-to-end -end stuff... That would favour you on Sunday, but All right. we're not okay. going to do that. He's saying total control. Bring the chaos. Bring the chaos. Bring the chaos. Let's get the predictions locked in. Youngen, you're very, very confident. What's the prediction? What's the score going to be? 3 0 Liverpool. Cool. I can't stand you. Wow. <laughs> I'm being honest. 3 0 Liverpool. You don't yeah. think that? 4 0 Liverpool. <laughs> you're right. 4 0. Uh, all right. Cool. Laughable. Angelina. Oh, I'm going to go 2 1 United. 4 0. You are something else. Crookie. 2-2. Two, two. Crookie! Same as last Aww. year. Crookie, man! Uh -oh. Come on! 2-2. Two, two. Believe! How about you, Flex? Yeah, he did say that. If you say we're going to draw, then that means we're going to lose. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> Man United are going to win the game. Um, we'll win the game. Still, it's first game in there. We do concede, but... 2-1 Man United. Do you know what? Fun fact. I wouldn't start the if I was Man United. Why? I'll start Maguire. Of course, because you want us to. No, I actually, I actually think you guys are actually dissing Maguire. In I think way? he was okay last season. No, he was when he had to come in. But yeah. let's not kid ourselves. Well, do, do you want him to start for you? Do you want to buy him? No, we got Bird <laughs> Van Dijk, Konate. We got two. Well, and now we've bought a top defender in Delit, and we have another one in Europe ready top, to come though? through. Is he top? Yes, he is. Wasn't playing at Bayern. He was. Don't listen he to the media. Playing at he was Bayern. playing every time he was fit. He was playing. So, he, so he's unfit. He played, he's he, an unfit this, centre back. No, he had some injury problems last year. He still made over 30 appearances. Okay. Don't believe the narrative. But actually, I expect you to believe it because you hate us. That's fine. Yeah. No problem. Zach's here as well. There you go. You yeah. probably hate him as well. So I don't, don't really care, do you? Yeah. You don't You're going to find out. You don't I really care. You, like, see his face, guys. Remember this face. Yeah. Yes. I, do you know what? I want you to get beat so bad, I, I'm you have to go be... add another song to the mixtape. <laughs> 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 you have to get in the booth oh and like God. go and just like let off. Do you know what's so crazy? That like, like, I'm trying to be so chill and humble here. I actually... I don't, wanna, really I don't want to say it and then come back to bite me. Just say what you need to say, go on. I think this is going to be a walk in the park. Do you? I actually do. I'm so glad you I, I, I got it. I'm a bit... I'm a get, like, yeah, he's a good player. Um, so he could, he, start, he could, to be honest. yeah, he's not going to start. He can bring some stability to your midfield, but if you're going to start Casemiro, Menu, and Mount, you see him laughing. You see him laughing, guys. <laughs> We're going to make him be accountable. Okay, that's all we've got time for on today's edition of Inside. There was a big thank you to Alex Crook, Angelina Kelly, and a good friend Youngen, and we'll see you on the next show. Hopefully, with Man United with three points in the bag and we can just silence all those Liverpool fans. Take care, see you in the next episode. Peace.